We are often encouraged to follow our intuition, to follow our heart. When experiencing doubt or anxiety, how do we determine whether this is just our paradigm playing out fears due to our ingrained beliefs, or whether it's our intuition telling us that we should be cautious about what we're thinking about? If you <clears throat> just peel back the onion on the question for a second, it's a, it's a good lesson for all of us here, then the nature of the need that's driving the question and the particular need here is obviously a need for certainty. Now, the reality is, and people don't like hearing this, but I'll tell you up front, there is no way to tell. There is no certainty because what you're really looking for is how do I know that if I'm going to take this path instead of that path, then you know this path is going to be my heart saying follow here, but over a little bit of fear. And this one is anxiety because it's giving me some feedback that you know that isn't the path I should take. The reality is you don't always know. The more you are able to let go of fear, the more you're able to build a, a psychology and a model of the world, which you know, as you get into the specialist and master phase of this program becomes a lot easier you know, as we build on the first you know, half of the program and the, the belief structure that we, we're shifting around, then you will have what I call a higher signal to noise ratio. In other words, you'll have far more ability to listen to the signal, intuition, gut feel, heart, whatever you want to call it, and less noise, which is the, the noise the mind generates around you know, rationality, doubt, you know, left brain linear you know, processes, which you know, don't work in a non-linear world. So you can't always tell. The more you let go of fear, the more you'll be able to tune in and get a better answer. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We have an inbuilt GPS. Let's call it that, an inbuilt sat-nav. And that GPS feeds back to us through our intuition, our gut feel, and our emotions. Which means that if you're driving down the road and you know, what you're asking me here is, how do I know that if I take this turn, it's the right turn versus that turn, it's the wrong turn? That's essentially the nature of this question. Yeah, if I, how do I do if I make this decision or that decision? Well, if you do make a wrong turn, what does the sat-nav do? Yeah, it doesn't scold you. It doesn't say you're a failure. It doesn't say you stupid driver, you missed the exit right? No. It says it recalculates what's the best way to get on track. And it'll say, please make a U-turn or please take the next exit. And it'll always calculate from where you are the fastest route back to where you go. Now, there are very few things in life that are undoable when it comes to decisions. Oh, should I you know, have this job or that job? Should I take, you know, apply for this university or that university? Well, at the end of the day, if you do it and it feels like it's not right, you're going to get that intuition. Please, you know, make a U-turn. In which case, make a U-turn. It's no big deal. Or if you continue down it, it's going to figure out how to get you back on track from wherever you are. One of the issues, obviously, that you know, is um, almost, let's say, impossible to undo is when you have children. For example, that's uh, we, we we can't undo that one, but even so, most people that have children with somebody, as long as you can remain, uh, if you uh, if you understand the difference between cohabiting and co-parenting, and you decide that yeah, the person you're with is not the person you want to spend your life with, but you now have children together, then your responsibility as an emotionally mature adult is to separate you know, co-parenting and cohabiting and be there for your kids. But realize that that doesn't require you to live with somebody in a dysfunctional environment that you're then teaching your kids is okay to spend the rest of your life with. Now, I'm not giving you that as a, an excuse or an opportunity not to learn or grow through your own insecurities in that relationship if that is the path you should be taking. Now, the other rule that he teaches is this. Now, when you have uncertainty, tune in, do what's right. Now, notice he didn't say do what's popular. Do what will make other people like you. Do what you feel would score the most brownie points. Uh-uh. Do what's right. And people that have the ability to walk from a place of authenticity on that path when making decisions always come out you know, on top. It's like when we come to taking risks, history always has and always will favor the risk taker. Those that risk the least tend to end up with the least. And of course, our brain doesn't remind us of that when we're scared of not being able to pay the mortgage on Friday. But you know, to quote the great Jim Rohn, if you think yeah, not taking risk or you think taking risks is expensive, wait until you get the bill for not taking risks. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Anna says, 
He said, if we want to change our bank account, the emotional account needs to go up first. My question is, what can we do to change our emotional bank account? Uh, it's all about the awareness um, of where we are daily on a scale or map of consciousness, or what do you suggest? Well, um, <clears throat> great question, Anna. Realize when, again, it comes to feeling emotions, it's not an inability to feel. If you're not happy right now, if it's not because you have a biochemical inability to feel happiness. If you can't, are not experiencing gratitude on a regular basis, it's not because you have a gratitude deficiency disease. It's not because you suffer from you know, a, a lack of you know, a certain nutrition or you know, antidepressant or whatever it is. That's not how it works. What's actually going on, and this is something I teach you know, very strongly in the EMF, my, my peer group, is you have rules that are preventing you that you made up. Now, you may have adopted them from some earlier experiences, but you have rules that are preventing you from experiencing that. For example, uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the language pattern here. If you turn around and say, I want to be happy, and you're upset because you're not happy, what you're essentially saying is, I am experiencing things in my outer world you know, that don't fit the pictures of what I've decided they should look like in the inner world. And as a result of that, I've chosen not to give myself permission to feel happy. Hmm, everybody follow that. Now, when you break that language pattern down, it's easy to see the, you know, uh, the uh, how much we're beating ourselves up because we're borrowing a preconditioned, imposed belief system that says, in order to be happy, I need to be yeah, fill in the blank. I need to have fill in the blank. The outer world needs to not have problems that everybody likes me, that you know, nobody rejects me, that my partner doesn't cheat on me, that you know, my business doesn't go back. All of these rules that we set up for what has to happen in order for us to give ourselves permission to feel X. Feeling grateful for 10 minutes is going to beat Prozac. I can promise you that. So when it comes to uh, being able to access gratitude, most people just don't have a map for being able to do it. But gratitude is a lot easier emotion to engage in than unconditional love because most people don't have a reference for unconditional love. You know, from our earliest memory, we hear, you can't do that, you shouldn't do that, and if you behave the way that mom and dad want you to behave, then we'll give you approval, validation, acceptance, and if you don't behave, then you're punished, told you're naughty, and yeah, we try to scold you. That's just the model of parenting that you know, has kind of clicked around uh, the, the society. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not saying I've got a better model. I'm just saying once we understand where a lot of our patterns come from, it makes it easier for us to then you know, put into context what's really going on. So the fastest way to raise the emotional bank account is to be grateful for what you have or be grateful for yeah, what you don't have. So it's not about looking at contrast frames about what I don't have, right? That, oh, well, you know, I don't have a million dollars in the bank, therefore I can't be happy. Have a look at this. Always a reason. Always. Again, if you read the inside track, I give you a masterclass on how to turn adversity to your advantage. When it appears in the outer world, everything's going to crack. 